who should be the next head coach at Auburn. This is obviously following Brian Harson's firing this week. And there were a ton of interesting responses. But the one that I got most frequently, or the one that I saw most frequently, rather, uh, was Deion Sanders. So let's go to our first response here. This one comes from Hunter Wells Kimball, whose tag is at NFL Future GM. So we got a future GM on the show here who says, I'm personally hoping Coach Primetime gets the call. I think he's one of the only coaches in the nation that can make Auburn great again. Plus, how awesome would it be to see a game with Coach Prime versus Coach Saban? That second point, I got to give him that. I get to see it in an athletic commercial. You know, <laughs> that's, that's, that's 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 what I get out of that. But also, yo, uh, no shade to you, Hunter, but you're a future NFL GM and not an athletic director. Because what you're asking is to get the Deion Sanders, the Coach Prime experience at Auburn. And I don't think that Auburn is the kind of place that wants to get down with the way that Coach Prime wants to do the job. I say this because they got something close. I shouldn't say close to it. The closest thing that Auburn has had to Coach Prime is Gus Malzahn. And Gus Malzahn is out there doing fun stuff. He's running fun plays. He's having a good time. And they ran him up out of there, and they're still paying him to coach at Central Florida, who, by the way, could end up winning their own conference championship this year. I get why Auburn fans would say, go back up the truck to Jackson State and see what you can do here. But I'm also looking at this and going, there are lots of men who I think could do great things at Auburn. But Tyler, I'm going to throw it back to you. Do you think that Deion Sanders and Auburn are a fit? Personally, no. We talked a lot about Deion last week and what his future might look like. And you said that he should probably stay at Jackson State until a job like Alabama or something that comes up for him. And I agree. I just the, Auburn is such a unique place. I'm not saying it's a bad job, but it's certainly a unique job and one that finding the right fit for is going to be tough. And I think there's a lot of really good coaches out there who are going to get asked about this job and they have to really think about, is this right for me? Which I think is a good segue into our next response here who comes from uh, Wilbur Sample, who says, should be or will is the question. If they could get out of their own way, Lane Kiffin would be their perfect hire, but they can't and won't, so they'll end up with Hugh, Hugh Freeze, I assume they're referring to there, and the same booster problem that has killed them for the last decade. How do you feel about Lane Kiffin potentially going to Auburn? I think it'd be fascinating. I think it'd be very interesting. Uh, matter of fact, the last time that we saw a sitting head coach leave a job, not just within the conference, but for a rival in the same division, it's actually Ole Miss to Auburn. That's Tommy Tuberville leaving Ole Miss in 1999 to go to Auburn. And five years later, he and Cadillac Williams run the table. 2004, Auburn goes 13-0, and finishes as the AP number two team in the country. And I believe that was the moment when everybody decided, okay, we need a playoff because this can't happen anymore. We can't have an undefeated Auburn team in the SEC not have an opportunity to play for a national championship. That said, the Lane Kiffin experience and the Auburn experience feels like fun for everybody. A fun time will be had by all because we're talking about perhaps the most college football of college football programs with the most college football coach of college football coaches coming together to form up like Voltron for an unforgettable experience. Like, I'm on board for that. This is a program that once slicked the rails of a railroad to try to knock off the track a rival team. You know, the, the, the way that Auburn fans want to get down and the way that Auburn fans feel about themselves is wild. Like, the only team that I think even comes to a, a high watermark of the Auburn fan experience is probably a and who you can't tell anything about nothing. Right now, imagine that they get Lane Kiffin to come to Auburn. Monique voice. I would like to see it, Tyler. I would like to see it. I don't blame you. I'd love to see it. I think either of these uh, examples, either Deion Sanders or Lane Kiffin, it would be great theater for all of his fans watching it. I, I can't even imagine that the stakes of the Iron Bowl with either of these coaches roaming the Auburn sideline. But again, it's a question of fit because I have no doubt that Auburn could offer Lane Kiffin more money than what he's making at Ole Miss. And they probably, if we're being honest, have more resources to win a national championship. I mean, they won one uh, in the past 10 years, I believe, and they made it to another one. So clearly it's possible. Now it's a question as to Lane Kiffin, do you want to leave? I mean, he has a pretty good situation at Ole Miss right now. But again, if he really wants to win a national championship, if that is his number one goal, Auburn is probably the better fit there. But 
it's a risk. It's a risk for any of these coaches, and I think it goes back to your original point. Does Auburn want to go with Deion Sanders? I, I, that's how, def- how I feel about Lane Kiffin as well. It's more up to the coaches than it is to Auburn, whether Auburn fans want to admit it or not. I think that you're on to something when you say it's up to Auburn fans. However, I do think that Ole Miss to Auburn is a lateral move. I know that Auburn won a 2010 national championship. They also had Cam Newton, which for me makes Cam Newton the greatest college football player of all time. Cam Newton carried Auburn to a national championship, not the other way around. Also underneath all of that, we're talking about we're we're talking about having to play not just Nick Saban every week or every year, but being in his state. It's his state. And Auburn fans know that better than anybody else knows that. Okay. At least in Mississippi, you can go beat up on Mike Leach in the egg bowl. It's okay. It's fine. You're going to win some of those. You're going to lose some of those. You're still going to have to play LSU, Texas A&M, Arkansas, all teams that are very good and could be SEC title contenders any given year because the division is just that deep. I also want to give a nod to uh, producer Cat, who I'm just going to go ahead and continue to mention is a Tennessee alumna who makes the point that, uh, yeah, we're talking about a program that's giving away $55,000 a day in buyouts presently to Brian Harson to Gus Malzahn. It's ridiculous what they're able to do over there. So you talk about having resources. I mean, sure, if those resources aren't tied up and being given to dudes that don't coach at Auburn, yeah, you've got the resources. But if you're going to pay, my goodness, 55 grand a day to two dudes to not coach your football team and to coach other football teams, I don't see how you can tell another coach you're setting him up to succeed with that kind of math being doled out to the last two dudes that took on the head coaching job at Auburn. Hey, the best job in the world is a fired football coach. That's all I got to say. I move on to the next two responses. We'll go pretty quick with these because I thought they were interesting, but they're a little bit off the beaten path. First one comes from Jacob Bauer, who says, Brian Hartline. This one, I, I did a double take when I saw it, but we've talked about Brian Hartline at length on the show, and I know you think really highly of him as a coach. I do. I think the world of Brian Hartline as a coach. I mean, you look at what he's been able to do at Ohio State as the wide receiver coach, and I dare say it is unprecedented. And the reason I put it that way is there's really no wide receiver tradition outside of Paul Warfield, Chris Carter, David Boston, and then you get into the Terry McLaurin's, the Santonio Holmes of the world. But we took it back to 2007, the last time that Ohio State had a first-round draft pick in the NFL draft until Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave did it just last year. And you, when you think about what Ohio State has been in college football as a whole, it's been running the football. They want to run the football. They want to play defense. They have Heisman winners that play tailback. Like the only guy to win it twice played tailback at Ohio State. So for you get a guy like Brian Hartline who immediately hits the ground running and recruits his behind off, five-star after five-star, and then develops them into first-round draft picks, I mean, you could do a whole hell of a lot worse than asking Brian Hartline to be your next head coach. However, I think the Auburn job is beneath him. I, 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 I honestly believe being the Ohio State wide receiver coach right now with the guys he has right now, the head coach he has, the play calling they have, the kind of play they have on both sides of the ball, you want to leave all that to go and rebuild a place that is going to bounce you just as soon as it doesn't look like it's going well? Like, I can't, I can't do that to Brian Hartline. Gus Malzahn beating Nick Saban, and they fired him for it. Like, I don't, I don't see that as a great way to say, hey, Brian Hartline, please take your first pass at being a Power 5 head coach in Nick Saban's state at the program that is under Nick Saban's thumb. It's just not a great way to do business. Now, again, not shade to Brian Hartline as much as it is to Auburn. Does that make sense, Tyler? <laughs> Yeah, you caught me a little off guard there, but I agree with you. I mean, that would be Brian Hartline's first head coaching job. He's not even an offensive coordinator right now. That'd be like mm-hmm. someone throwing you off a ship into the middle of the ocean and saying, learn how to swim. That'd basically be well, trying to hey, learn on the job at Auburn. To that point, though, Shane Beamer had never been an offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator for that matter. Uh, I, 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 It's not unprecedented. Dabo Sweeney was never a coordinator. I'm not going to throw that part out and say that disqualifies anybody from being a head coach. I'm just going to say that Auburn is not exactly the place where I would want to get right. started. Right. The stakes are a little bit different there. But let's get to our last response here. Uh, this one comes from Land of Troy, who says Matt Rule. Now, Matt Rule, his name has come up a lot ever since he got fired from the Panthers. 
But I hear you laughing. I don't really think this is the right fit for Matt Rule. I just am laughing about people wanting a man who's making 40 plus million dollars for the next two years to sit on his couch to coach their crappy football team. Like, I just don't understand. I mean, you, you just said it like five minutes ago. The best job in America is an unemployed and just fired head coach in college football. And uh, apparently in the NFL, because David Tepper is going to pay out all of this money, something like $834,000 a month for Matt Rule to sit on his couch in North Carolina. I don't think that I want to go back to working that quickly, right? I want to wait for that money to stop coming in before I even think about wanting to get another job. And then $40 million, you want me to give up that to coach Auburn in this economy? There's no way, Tyler. Like, I just, I, I don't get it. I would not, I'd say, hey, Matt, courtesy call, because I got to go back to my boosters and tell them something. <laughs> you interested? And he's like, please, I appreciate the call. No, click. That's the end of it. I just don't, I don't understand. Tyler, do you have an argument for why Matt Rule should be the head coach at Auburn? Certainly not an argument, unless Matt was just like, you know what? He sees it as a, an investment opportunity. Maybe he could double his money. He's like, oh, I'll take that job. I'll mail it in, completely sabotage the situation. And then I'll, instead of getting $40 million, I'll get 80 because they'll fire me within a year anyway, and then I'll just keep racking up the money. Goodness gracious, man. I I guess. I, I, I guess that's one way of looking at it, but I'm not that money that's not hungry. A real, and that's I, not a real opinion, by the way. But, uh, <laughs> what? Right. I'm just trying to make it work inside of my brain. Right. Uh, maybe it's like crypto in that way. If yeah. you can talk yourself into it, you can talk yourself into anything, you know, and I'm over here going, well, Matt rule. Hmm. I wonder if he wants another temple. Think about that for just a second. Who wants another temple? Temple doesn't even want another temple. You know what I mean? And that's the reason we know this man. And then he goes into another dumpster fire that was Baylor football and made it respectable. I got to believe those are the hardest jobs in the world to get respect from. And then you get your Yankees job because that man did want to get back to the NFL, be a head coach in the NFL, and they fire you for it. I just, I got, I got better things to do, like cut my lawn, like water the grass, like find out if my grandkids are cool, you know? Like, y'all want to build race cars? Uh, again, maybe I'm just projecting here. Thank you for watching the number one college football show. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and like this video so that you don't miss any of the best college football coverage in America.